Hi, welcome back to Math Without Frills. And now we're going to discuss the fifth method of solving a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, which is the standard form of the quadratic equation. So this method is called completing the square. This is a process of writing or making the left side of our quadratic equation a perfect square, which are the perfect square of first degree polynomial x plus y or x minus y. So it must be x plus y squared or x minus y squared. These perfect square first degree polynomials are the results of the expressions x squared plus 2xy plus y squared and x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Now this, the left side of the quadratic equation, should be of the form or of the same form as these expressions. So we can come up with their perfect squares. And of course, when we have already the perfect squares, it would be easy for us to find the values of the excess or the roots of the quadratic equations. Let's have an example of each of these expressions of perfect square polynomials. Y here, of course, is always constant. So an example for x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, we can have x squared plus 6x plus 9. This will equal to x plus 3 squared. How come? We will tackle that later. And then, an example for x squared minus 2xy plus y squared would be x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that will equal to x minus 2 squared. So now we know we can see how it is formed. Let's get into gears. Let's say we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0 as quadratic equation. To complete the square of the left side of this quadratic equation, we must separate the terms that have a known variable from the term that is constant. To do that, we can transfer the constant negative 15 to the other side of the equation. So this will become x squared plus 2x equals 15 will become positive, so just 15. Then we take the coefficient of x, which is 2. And 1 square is equal to 1, because 1 times 1 equals 1. Then we add the square of 1, which is 1, to both members of the equation, or to both sides of the equation. So we'll have x squared plus 2x 
adding the square of 1 which is 1 plus 1 equals 15 adding again the square of 1 which is 1 we have plus 1 then we have to get the square root of both sides of this equation so we know that 15 plus 1 equals 16 and we know that 16 is a perfect square of 4 so we don't have a problem with that but here on the left side with our three term polynomial or trinomial how do we get the square root of this trinomial if the right side has 16 which is a perfect square this the left side this trinomial should be also a perfect square because when it's not there's a problem we learned in the previous video the part 2 of quadratic equation that you can get the factors of the trinomial on the left side so let's get the factors of this trinomial and the factors must be the same that when we square it the result is of course this trinomial and just like what we did in the part 2 video of quadratic equation we should find the two linear factors of this trinomial and reviewing we learned that the first terms of each of these linear factors or expressions are the factors of the first term of this trinomial and the second term of each of these linear factors are the factors of the third term of this trinomial actually we can easily know if a trinomial is a perfect square if its first term is a perfect square and also if its last term is a perfect square so in this case we have the first term x squared which is a perfect square whose factors are x and another x which if we multiply x times x is x squared and also we have the last term as a perfect square whose factors are 1 and another 1. When we multiply 1 to itself, 1 times 1 is 1. So this one is a perfect square. And so with that, you can already write here the first terms of our linear factors, which are x and another x on the second linear factor. Another review, we know that these linear factors are called linear factors because of the variable x whose exponent is only 1. Refer to the part 2 of quadratic equation. We have that, we have that there. And then we have the factors of 1 here, which is also 1, and another 1 here. So we have x times x is equal to x squared and 1 times 1 is equal to 1 of course we must take note of the signs here we have positive x squared so its factors if not both positive it would be both negative because positive times positive is positive and negative times negative is also positive. The third term of this trinomial is also positive which is positive 1. So the factors could be both positive or could be both negative. But we must consider the sign of the middle term which is positive 2x from the part of video of quadratic equation we learned that the sum of the inner terms and the outer terms of these two linear 
factors is equal to the middle term of this trinomial. Now, let's see if we get the factors of positive 1 as both negative 1. Will it result to positive 1? Let's see. Let's start with the outer terms. Positive x times negative 1 is equal to negative x. And negative 1 times positive x is equal to negative x again. And if you are going to get the sum of these two, we get the result negative 2x. But we have positive 2x here, the middle term of this trinomial. So we must get the positive 2x as the result of the sum of the outer terms and the inner terms of these two linear factors, meaning that this is wrong. What if we make this positive? So we have the outer terms positive x times positive 1 is positive x. And the inner terms positive 1 times positive x is again positive x. Getting the sum of this, 2, we get positive 2x, which obviously serves the middle term of our trinomial. And it means that our factors x plus 1 and another x plus 1 are right. We can also write this as x plus 1 squared, which is equal to 16. Notice that both sides of the equation now are perfect square. And from this, we can arrive at the value of x by taking the square root of both sides of this equation. So let's perform it. It's the square root of x plus 1 squared and the square root of 60. We should know that the square root radical sign means 1 half. And multiplying these exponents will give us 1. So the square root of x plus 1 squared gives us x plus 1, whose exponent is 1. But because the exponent is just 1, we can omit 1 and even the open and close parentheses and just have x plus 1. Then the square root of 16, we have plus minus 4. Why plus minus or positive negative 4? We should know that the square root of any positive real number always has two signs solutions. Because a positive number multiplied by itself is positive, and a negative number multiplied by itself is still positive. Now we can easily get the values of our x's or the roots of our quadratic equation x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. That is by having x plus 1 equals positive 4 and x plus 1 equals negative 4. So here, let's continuously do it step by step. We have x is equal to 4 or plus 4. Transferring 1 to the other side of the equation, it will become minus 1. So now we have x 
is equal to 4 minus 1 is 3. Our x sub 1. Then we have x equals minus 4. Transferring plus 1 to the other side of the equation, it will become minus 1. So now we get x equals minus 4 plus minus 1 equals minus 5. Our x sub 2. Now we already have the roots of our quadratic equation x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0, which are 3 and negative 5. Our x sub 1 and x sub 2. And going back to these examples, we now know how x squared plus 6x plus 9 results to x plus 3 squared. And x squared minus 4x plus 4 becomes x minus 2 squared. And that is by performing these operations here. So that's it for now. I'll see you next time for the part 4 of quadratic equation. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share this channel, and comment down there below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.